Welcome once again to another episode of A Question of Law. This is City TV's legal education program, and here we seek to break down the law and explain it as it pertains to the daily activities of our lives. My name is David Kweku Sechi, and after this quick short break, we'll be back and I'll introduce my guest to you, and we'll get right into the conversations. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back from that break. And now uh, you can follow us with the hashtag A Question of Law. And um, I guess that's seated, and I want to introduce them to you. I have with me uh, Salom Adonu, who is a private legal practitioner, as well as Albert Kwashiga, a private legal practitioner, as well as a law lecturer at the UPSA School of Law. Gentlemen, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank Hi. you. How are you doing? Oh, we are doing Very great. Good. I mean, it's, it's, it's been. Um it's, it's been a minute. Back. I bet I've yeah. taken a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> no, got, you seem to have it. It's, uh, look, looking very rich it's, and it's, prosperous. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's um, that's good to hear. I mean, yeah, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the I mean, bar is prospering. Well, that's, that's what they. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a lost observation. But I can see that the bar is really prospering for 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 Celo. Okay. I can see that. You I can mean, see everything it. shows. Yeah. I mean, the gadgets why, he's why, using why, and everything why shows. Why deflecting? Why deflecting? <laughs> <laughs> deflecting because that's the reality. <laughs> you want to see people prosper, you look at the gadgets uh, they use. Yeah, and all that. Easy, you yeah. see that yeah. not these people are flat. Things have changed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I claim it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, that's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's get right into the conversations and. Um, Recent times, there's been some pretty interesting, uh, should I say, um, clash of ideas and concepts and uh, opinions. And uh, we're looking at the tradition versus the law. Where do we draw the line? Um, you know, in, in, in recent discourse, in the news and all of that, um, we see once again, as it seems to, be, to happen, you know, um, ever so often, once again, there seems to be the traditions and the traditional customary law vis-a-vis um, -vis constitutional law, modernity, um, the direction we appear to want to go, you know. And this is what is happening. I'm referring specifically to the issue of the Babu uh, Wulomo, you know, and the um, purported uh, ceremony, um, marriage or otherwise ceremony that took place. Um, I don't know where, you know, you stand on, 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 on these issues as it were, but the question that I have is, the Constitution as we have it, where do we draw the line between that, you know, as it's customs and traditions vis-a-vis -vis the current legal dispensation? Any of you can take it. I just... Well, sort of you want to... Uh, okay, so... Um Yes, we are we are we are creatures of of customary law mm. and traditions and all of that culture etc. So uh, culture doesn't mean a bad thing. Mm. Customary law also doesn't mean a bad thing. Tradition doesn't mean a bad thing. Mm. So just like anything, you know, we were taught in primary school that culture is the way a group of people live. Yes. So the way a group of people lives cannot necessarily be said to be bad. Mm. Okay. So what happens is that law regulates the conduct of society mm. so this is how you live now we bring in law to regulate the way you live so that the excesses in your culture the law will deal with it okay so so customary law tradition culture nothing wrong with it mm. so we have customary practices mm -hmm. okay and customary practices again are not bad or they are not good it depends on the specifics you're talking okay. about so customary practices in our culture we greet if you see an adult passing you greet the adult in, yeah. in typical conservative societies whether mm. you know the adult or not once you are passing by you the greet. adult you greet if yeah. you don't greet it it's strange mm. you know so that is one of them uh, marriage customary marriage mm. it, it's a good thing so people marry okay um, things like using your left hand when you are talking to an adult mm. is frowned upon mm -hmm by our culture or customary system. Yeah. So, so, so these are examples of practices we have come to know. Mm. So there's polygamy, okay? And there are other practices such as trocosy. Mm -hmm. You know, there are other practices such as, you know, underage marriages, mm -hmm. etc. These are also practices. They are cultural, mm. they are customary. Yeah. But the question is, in the light of the law, as we have come to see it, yeah. modernism, etc., and things we have now be become aware of 
of the human being are these things correct or do we still want to continue mm -hmm. living you know that way so the law comes in the law is dynamic the law comes in to clip the excesses then now we have the law so before you do anything yeah you run it by the law mm. to see if it passes the test of the law okay if it doesn't pass the test of the law then that thing becomes wrong in law mm. or it becomes illegal mm. or it becomes inappropriate mm. so customary law traditions cultures generally are not bad mm. okay but just as we have in any sphere of life there are good things and there are bad things so mm. we have to look at the specifics to be able to make a determination okay. in the eyes of the law mm. whether these practices are good mm. or these practices are wrong okay all right uh, your uh, albert all right so um once again thank you for for this um we all know that in the in the last few days uh, this um customary marriage issue between the uh, bob Wulomo within the gang context and uh, a young lady of 12, 12 years old has, has has become a subject of intense debate okay and my initial caution when this issue came up was that we need to we need to tread cautiously on on i mean on on this matter because it was never for me a straightforward issue i think salem has actually dealt with the um customary aspect okay now maybe where to start from if if you look at the current constitution of the republic of ghana okay yeah. and look at article 11 mm. it tells about the sources of law mm -hmm. and the sources of law includes our own constitution it includes the Act of Parliament yeah. and includes our our customary law mm. as pronounced upon mm. by the courts of the yeah. Republic of Ghana. And so there's, there's one thing that we need to recognize that before even 1992, there's always been an attempt to, to marry or ensure that our customary practices, which yeah. have laws around them, do, do coexist mm. with the modern yeah. state of the law yeah okay and so for me there's always been some tension although they seem to be uh, you know calm bedfellows occasion occasionally mm. there are serious tensions and these tensions are historical they they have been there because of how the modern law came into or well, let me say the british system of law mm. came into being okay so before the british still a bit of history before the british came to i mean the the place we now call ghana mm. and the many other places i mean where where were territories mm. okay with our own leaders yes with our own cultural yeah. practices yes. the way we marry who we marry mm. and at what age we marry and actually betrothal was a key component of our customary mm. practice and so on the upon the arrival of the of the british i mean there were attempts and i have to say there were attempts to you know um there were attempts to actually take out some of these practices mm. because from the perspective of the british for instance some of these practices were not consistent with the British common law, mm. which they had actually brought to and us. And that was based on their culture and their traditions. Based on their culture. Yeah. And so these tensions have always been there. And I give you two cases, for instance, in which these, these tensions have arisen. For instance, in 1906, okay, there was, there was a case decided in, uh, there was a case of Hughes versus Davis and another, okay? It had to do with customary law, right? Where a British judge had said, that customary law in our case was foreign law imagine mm. so british pronouncing um on our customary law which they have come to meet now calling our customary law foreign, foreign law. law foreign law to who to the british law mm. and that's 1906 somewhere in 1916 mm -hmm. one of the most popular cases was decided angu versus atta okay and angu versus atta in that case the court also made the British courts and the Privy Council also made the point again that customary law was kind of alien. Alien, okay? And so in if, Ghana. In Ghana. And so if an issue arose in Ghana of a customary practice, you had to come before that that court yeah. and actually prove that 
that is actually the culture of the people. Right? Wow. And this did not make people very happy. So John Mensah Saba and Co wrote mm. criticizing mm. these kinds of judgments and all that. Mm. So the tension has always been there. Okay. So occasionally it will it rear its up. heads. And so I'm not surprised that you know this situation has, has mm. arisen concerning the, mm. the younger, but this is my preliminary comment mm. for now. Mm. Yes. Go, we'll see. Yes. So, so just to add some more yes. flesh, yes. super yes. super exposition by yes. just to add more, more, more flesh to the the part about the 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 sources of law. Mm. So Article eleven, like Riley said, of the constitution tells us about the laws of God. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it tells us in a hierarchical order. So the laws of Ghana are comprised, one, the constitution, should, yeah. which is a basic law of mm -hmm. the land. Now, enactments made by, so maybe acts of parliament. Yes. Yeah. Then we have the orders, rules, and regulations, yes. etc. Then we have the existing law, and we have the common law. Yeah. So he mentioned customary law being part of our law. Mm. So the customary law is part of the body of law that our constitution calls the common law. Mm -hmm. And the constitution was quick to explain what it meant by common yeah. law. Because common law outside of Ghana has a certain meaning. Yeah. Okay. That's, a British common That's law. A, the British common law. Yeah. So when you say common law anywhere in the world, Excellent. people think about the British, British common, common law. law. Yeah. So the constitution quickly, just after that uh, uh, clause, comes down to Two, clause two, mm. to explain what it meant by uh, the, the common law. The of Ghana common law. So, the, okay, so the common law of Ghana yeah. shall comprise the yeah. rules of law, generally known as the common law. Okay. So the common law of the the, the UK. And it can also be Australia, any yes. of the common law countries, the, uh, where common India, law whatever it is. Yeah. The rules generally known as the doctrines of equity. Okay. And rules of customary law, including those determined by the superior courts of judicature. Mm. Now it goes ahead to also talk about what customary law is. Okay. So he said customary law means the rules of law which by custom are applicable to particular communities in Ghana. So that is the context we are mm. we are looking at it from. Mm. Now the 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 issue about uh, customary law versus the law itself, maybe positive law or the law as we have come to know it, passed yeah, by yeah. you know the the, the, the processes. Now, this is a hierarchy. Mm. So nothing should stand against the constitution and survive. Mm. Okay. So if a certain practice in customary law now comes up against the constitution and the constitution says that cannot be, yeah. that customary law mm. should not survive. Okay. That is a hierarchy. Excellent. That is why we have what we call the judicial review. So you hear in many instances, somebody takes a matter to the Supreme Court, mm. challenging the constitutionality of a certain law. Okay. Law passed by parliament, mm. but somebody takes it to court mm. and says that this law contravenes a certain part of the constitution yeah. and quotes article 1, 2, and 2, 1, etc. to say that to the extent of the inconsistency, mm. that particular law must be declared null and void. It is never the case that that part of the constitution must be declared null and void. No, yeah. the constitution is the standard. Okay. So anything else you must measure against the constitution. Mm. So we have been in, in recent times there was a matter about the company law mm. and, and certain provisions of it. Somebody went to court to say that those provisions are inconsistent with the constitution okay. because a person is, is, is innocent unto proving unto, guilty, unto proving guilty yeah. and all of that. So you cannot say that by virtue of you having some criminal proceedings against you, you cannot be a director or you cannot yeah. be a this person okay. or that person as far as the company because law you're is still concerned. Innocent. Exactly. Yeah. So that is the bigger principle stated by the constitution mm. and so if you want to match that against what the smaller law which is the company law for example said then it means that you will be contravening what the constitution has mm. said and the constitution is the standard so the other small law we must be struck down okay. Okay. okay so so, that, so that's how it works excellent now so i mean so we'll get to the what we will law more specifics yes. okay and yes. the law yeah. i mean there were a lot of people have quoted and all that i mean mm. yesterday i actually i've read the story that uh, the director of the, the law school yes. you know yeah. had actually appeared on uh, Bernard's show, yes, I think last point, night, of view. and yeah. had made some, you know, admissions yeah. about how, you know, they looked at the thing from the beginning, and, and that's really the, the 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 issue. But from from what Salam has said, okay, what 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 laws in the Constitution, for instance, uh, may this practice be contravening, for instance? So, what is the the main law, and against which we are measuring mm. what has happened so far, which everybody's talking about. So there are certain provisions in the constitution which I think that we have to know for the sake of education. Mm. Now, if you look at Article 26, Clause 2. Okay. Okay, so let me take Article 26, Clause 1, which talks about cultural rights and practices. It's mm. very important. Now, Article 26, 1 says that every person is entitled to enjoy, practice, profess, 
maintain and promote any culture, language, mm. tradition, mm. or religion, mm. but subject to the provisions of this constitution. Mm. Okay. So if you were engaging in a certain practice, mm. the quality of that practice or its legality must be measured against the constitution. The constitution. Yeah. Now, Article 26.2 goes on to say that all customary practices which dehumanize mm. or are injurious to the physical and mental well-being mm. of a person are prohibited. Okay. All right? Mm. So all customary practices which dehumanize. So you, if, if you want to go hard on the cultural practice, mm -hmm. you must ask, does it dehumanize? Okay. Because this is a standard. Okay. Now, if it, it or does it dehumanize? Or, or is it injurious mm. to the physical and mm. mental well-being mm. of the subject, the person mm. who is involved? As far as I'm concerned, this is the context within which we have to look at every law yeah. and every conduct yeah. and anything that has happened so far mm. in this Bobby Wollomo case. Mm. Yes. Right. Well. right. Yeah. Good. So uh, just before we take our first break, let's, the question that comes to mind is, so how do we deal with the issue of age of consent vis-a-vis -vis child protection, vis-a-vis -vis the customary practice of someone that's under age? And when I say under age, I'm doing a more broad context under age, not 12 years old. I'm looking at under 16. Right, because age of consent is 16, right? Age of marriage is, minimum 18. age of marriage is 18, but age of consent is 16. So looking at that context and saying that, how do we then view this as legal persons where we see that in a customary practice, there appears to, it appears within certain cultures to be okay to involve children but the child, children's act also refers to um, age of consent. It also refers to child protection and the well-being of the child. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's quite a straightforward matter because mm -hmm. uh, it's not for nothing that the constitution or the, the, the statutes provide age limits for things. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you cannot vote if you are not 18. Yeah. You cannot drive when you are not 18 mm. and, and things like that. Mm. So you cannot be married until you are 18. Okay. You cannot have consent to have sex until you are 16. Mm. So, so, so these have been spelled out in law. All right. So if you, 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 you come across a conflict, yeah. and what is the conflict? This person is of this age wanting to do this that the law has prescribed a qualification for. Mm. So the question is, is the person qualified by the prescription of the law? Mm. If the constitution says 18, and the person is 12 or 13 or 15 or 16, the person is not qualified. Mm. No matter how you look at it, the person is not qualified. So the case in point, you could see that now, a lot of the discussion has been around, of course, the discussion has always been around the age of the person. Yeah. Because that is it's where material. the issue is. It's material it is very it. material yeah. to their discussion. Yeah. So my view is that once the person fails the test of statute, mm. which is the age limit, mm. no discussion. So now we have instances where people are even, at some point, was marriage. It became betrothal. Uh, now it became just a customary practice. Yeah. And, and then that, the, 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 the spirit or the dating date that is getting married of, to the person. Yeah. Because as the discussion is growing, enlightenment is coming. People are seeing that you can't even talk about betrothal mm. because the child may not be able to consent. Mm. Section 14 of, of, the, of the Children's, Children's Act, Act yeah. talks about betrothal yeah. and the right to refuse. Mm. And so the child, you said you cannot have any transaction, you know, uh, 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 on dowry, you cannot have any dowry transaction yes. also without the consent yes. of the child or something yes. like That's, that. I think you know, let, let me, let, let me, let, the, it says yes, 14B. Yes. I think so 14B. there's a right to refuse. There, refuse yes. Yes. yes, so there's a right to refuse. refuse. Yes. Yes. So now, you know, at what age or mm. at what point can that underage person mm. give consent? Yeah. Would that consent be valid? 14 says, no person shall force a child, A, to be betrothed. Yes. B, to be subject of a diary transaction. transaction yeah. Or C, C, to be married. Yeah. Then two says, the minimum age of marriage yeah. of whatever kind shall be 18 years. Yeah. So this is spelled out in black mm. and white. So even if you are talking about betrothal, mm. you know, can the child say yes? 
I want to be betrothed. Does mm -hmm. she have the consent to say so? Yeah. You know, so that is the nuance that the discussion mm -hmm. has brought now. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the persons in this, they, they've begun shifting the position. Yeah, <laughs> that it is not a marriage. It's not even a betrothal. Yeah. It is an ex. It is. Um, an expression of interest yes. by the deity. Yes. So the the person in 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 in, in so, question yes. is just performing the act on behalf of yeah. the deity. Okay. Whatever that means, mm. you know. Whatever that means, mm. we are here to unravel what that. No, means. but you met you sell off. I, I mean, I have a contrary view. Okay. My my view of session fourteen is entirely mm. different. Okay. 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 So we'll look at that. But I, but but I want yes. you to ref make reference to the section okay. again mm -hmm. you okay. said so, so section, 14 section 14 of the, of the children's, children's act, act 1994 section yeah. one right okay. yes act okay. five and two six zero mm -hmm. yeah. let, let's hear a contrary view no 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 so to read it again yes right? read it again uh, okay. 14 one said no person shall force a child mm. a to be betrothed to that mean b to be the subject of a dowry transaction mm -hmm. or c to be married yeah one two 14 one two says 14 two says the minimum age of marriage of whatever kind shall be 18 years okay so the child in question yeah fails the 18 years test yes so he cannot be he married cannot be she cannot be married okay that's why they say it's not a marriage okay all, all right. right so i mean so on the face value that's what i'm saying that it's very important for us to look at these provisions mm. so i this is positive law it's written mm. in black and white yeah but sometimes given the context mm the interpretation that is put on some of these laws can have a different meaning also okay. very very important okay mm -hmm. now and i'm and i'm speaking from the the cultural context in the light of this particular mm -hmm. provision okay now what is um section 14 one saying for instance mm -hmm. is it that what a person shall not what force a child mm -hmm. right so what it means implicitly from that language mm -hmm. is that the child okay impliedly mm -hmm. Can willingly agree okay uh, but yes 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 this moment okay that, <laughs> that the child okay. okay has the option of saying no because the, the, the law is saying that <laughs> no person <laughs> shall force <laughs> yes so force who yes what does it say no person shall force uh, what's session 14 says that no, it's uh, okay. no, it's still, no. For, yes 14. so 14 yeah uh, so right to refuse this hotel and marriage yeah who has the option to refuse the child Excellent. Yes. So it, inherent in that yes. is to admit that although the child can refuse, yes. the child can also what agree. Yes, but but yes. Albert, but yes. To be fair, yes. there's a reason why we also have the age of consent, which means you can you don't have the capacity. But, that, but to let me consent. say there, there are a lot of things in respect of which our parents have stood in in, uh, in local parenting yes. and have agreed on things on our behalf. Yes. yes. You understand me? Yes. So in certain cases, the consent. The, the, then come from the consent the is not your own, yes. but it is from, from somebody parents. else who okay. has the capacity to grant it in your behalf. Interesting. Do you okay. understand what I'm saying? Okay. And okay. You, customarily, mm. most of the marriages, yes. the people who have gone into the marriage yeah. have very little say. Yes. It's the families that you marry. Should. Even as adults. And as I'm saying that the contract context matters if you want to make place an interpretation of this statute. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I am not in haste to begin to conclude okay. that you know <laughs> all that. But the argument that has also been that is it's a betrothal. Okay. So do we say that betrothal is yeah. a form of a marriage? No, it's not. If it's it is a not, promise to marry. Excellent. If it is not, then fourteen two cannot apply to what has happened in the the, the Bubaloma case. What does fourteen two says? It says the minimum age of marriage, not mm. betrothal. So when it comes to betrothal, as mm. far as I am concerned, in my reading, mm. there is no age limit at all. You can even be through at 10, 9, okay. and all that. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? So even at birth. I, I, even at birth. Yes. Because it's not it's really, promised, it's to, it's promised to marry in the yeah. future. Yeah. But then, <laughs> where, see, wherein lies the child's capacity to say, I do, or I like, or I don't like? And that's the but point. But then you are saying that yes. that one can be done by the, by parents. the parents. And customarily, that's what has been happening. That's what I'm saying. That we cannot discuss this matter without looking at the customary context. And wow. so from day one when this issue came up, I've held this view. And I think people are now shifting and are beginning to see that it's not as simple as okay. the law is saying. It's possible. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we're back, this is getting hot and it's getting interesting. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back from that break. We're still having a conversation here on a question of law. And it's getting pretty interesting. 
um, the, the, the traditional law and customs vis-a-vis -vis the constitution and modern law and where we're going with it. Well, um, let me come back to you. Now, uh, Abed, how do we balance the preservation of our customs and our law whilst protecting the individual rights of persons living within Ghana? No, I agree that, um, you know, as a, as a unitary republic, mm. I, mean, I mean, we, we are one state, okay? I mean, all the divisions in the regions you see are purely for administrative reasons, yeah. okay? So we, yeah. are, we are one state. We are not like America, which is federal, or Nigeria, which is federal. It's one state, and so the general law applies across the country. And, and so long as we have agreed to be here, mm. we need to ensure that our conducts are consistent with provisions of the yeah. of the constitution yeah. so there's, there must always be a balance and this, this this balance i think has not really come easy anytime it comes to customary law mm -hmm. and the state of the of the modern law uh, but generally and as i've said i mean there's a lot of discretion in this for instance if this issue were to end up in a certain court mm. right and um, what is a judge being called upon to do, for instance, mm. is look at the provisions of the Constitution, to look at the facts that are available, and to come to a conclusion whether or not, for instance, this kind of customary practice mm. dehumanizes mm. or is injurious to mm. the physical well-being mm. of you know, the person in question. And I think yeah. that it would depend, for me, on case-by-case -case basis and the, and the facts that are presented before the court. By all means, it is important that mm. we keep a balance. We cannot, we cannot push the customary practices, which are also the customary laws of the people, mm. to the background mm. and or, or supplant that with yeah. uh, modern, you know, constitutional or I mean, any form of law. They must coexist, and the balance is within a scope of discretion, mm. which people who are authorized to exercise must exercise mm. well. So, I think, so, yeah. so, so, so that's an important test, all right? Yeah. The, the dehumanizing nature of it. So, like yeah. we stated earlier. Some of the cultural practices mm. or the customary practices dehumanize. Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, we mentioned the trocosy. Like yeah. FGM. Yeah. FGM. Yeah. FGM. Yeah. The FGM. Human genital yeah. mutilation yeah. and things yeah. like that. They are yeah. injurious yeah. to the person. So mm. those we cannot actually uh, 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 support. Or we, we, the law has Definitely. no place for them. Mm. Yeah. Another important test that this whole thing must be uh, 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 subject to subject, subjected to yeah. is what we call the welfare principle. In matters of children, it is important to determine whether whatever is happening is in the interest of the child or not. Mm. Once a determination is made that it is not in the interest of the child, yeah. then that cannot happen. If it's in the interest of the child, that can happen. So for example, we, we talked about consenting on behalf of the child mm. in most instances, like the school to attend, etc. Yeah. That may be seen as being in the interest of the child. Okay. So the welfare principle, okay. the person has to do this or do that mm. the law will look at whether in doing this or that it is in the ultimate interest mm. of the child mm. that is the paramount consideration mm. now the question is this particular lady we are dealing with now yeah. getting involved with the bobo Wulimo, is it in her interest, interest yeah. in the face of the welfare principle where does it stand mm. that is going to be a crucial mm. determination yes. yeah. i don't know because people have said that it is a privilege mm. to be married to the to Bobo Wulomo. Yeah. If, if indeed the, the, the dust settles, the age matter and all of that settles, and it settles in the favor of the proponents, mm. now the next question will be, is it in her best interest? Mm. What happens to her schooling? We are told that she has a chauffeur-driven car yeah. that takes she her to school and, and, and all of that. Because... Yeah of her, her privileged position her role mm. or her, her position which many may say is a privileged one mm. so it, it's 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 not it, it's quite nuanced mm. that's why when you look at how the matter started the yeah. outreach etc yeah. yeah now things now that more information is coming you know the dust is settling people are beginning to pipe down tone down on the criticism etc you know i won't want my and a child to be married by anybody. Yeah. I won't even give that consent. If yeah. the parent is to give the consent, mm. I won't give the consent. Mm. But somebody else would. It might do and that, the yeah. person will look at whether it is in the interest of the child. Mm. You know, once it does not break any rule, yeah. so the age limit is important, the dehumanizing 
you know, uh, provisions, very important. You must pass all of those. When you pass all of that, and now you make a determination whether it is in the interest of the child or not, then we can make progress. But usually, that determination comes from mm. institutions or, or the courts. Okay. And I just wanted to mention that okay. in matters of children, the welfare principle is also Very well. critical. So, Salon has made an important point about the extent of engagement. So between the Babugulomo and this young lady, mm. what is the extent of engagement between them? I mean, is it going to be sexual? Which they've categorically said it won't it be. It won't be. Mm. And so if, if it's not going to be sexual, and, I, I mean, even if, if it was sexual, what are the problems with that, for instance? You mm. have to ask all these questions, mm. okay? And so... But the Pediatric Society of Ghana yes. came out to condemn it outrightly because they said that there will be um, uh, medical issues. There, there can't be with, medical... See, that's what I'm saying. With, there can't be... Can, I understand. And, and thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that. No, but if it, uh, the, the pedi at what point... Now, timing is, timing is important. Very, very important. Okay. Yes, at what because... At the, the very the, beginning. The, they were one of yes, the first. So, so 12 years. They were one of the When it started, we knew about 12 years. Yes. Now it's evolved. Yeah. We, we hear it's 16. Okay. Tomorrow, maybe something else. But is the 16 not... Is the 16 the actual age or... Well, so, so, so we don't know. Because the man... It's, it's a matter of evidence. The man of Nungwa came out the following day on City Breakfast Show. You say 13. And said he was 13. She was yes. 13. So that's what I'm saying. It's, see, a so it's a matter of evidence. Okay. Uh -huh. What's, where, where is her birth certificate? Okay. When was she born? I mean, all of that. It's a matter mm. of evidence. Mm. So anybody can say anything. Okay. anything but it's, it's a matter of evidence. Okay. We need to see the evidence. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm once, that, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming. Mm. Yeah. So for example, if the evidence shows that in this is 16. She's actually 16. Then what a pediatric society. Doesn't really hold you know, exactly, as it did. As it did then. Earlier, so yeah. when it started, a lot of people were alarmed because of the age put out. It was the age matter. Yeah. That caused the, the, the consternation, alarm, you know. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah. you see, so anyway, so the, the, the point that I wanted to, um, you know, make yes. you know, before uh, Salem came in, as I was making, was that the, what the pediatric society has actually come out to say, mm. for instance. And I, I need to, I, at this point, it's, people may think I'm playing a devil's advocate, but it's also a matter of conviction. Look, we have, if she was 13 years old, for instance, there are, there are cases of teenage pregnancy mm -hmm. all across the country. This, yes. are, this, is, this is still a problem for us as yes. a country. We haven't major, major really one. been able to deal with that. Mm. So it means that people who are even 12, 13, mm. probably even 11, mm. are getting pregnant. Yes. And the, some of those people could go through the period of pregnancy mm. and deliver easily without a problem. Others could have you know, physical or medical challenges, for mm. instance. Mm. So there are, there are various aspects to this. Then, and so the, the issue is not... As, as we've all been saying here, it's not, it's not as simple as that. And I was talking about the extent of engagement, mm. okay? Mm. If, if it's sexual, mm. I mean, what is wrong with that, for instance? Mm. If, for instance, the, the engagement was going to interfere with her schooling, mm. then there's a problem. Salama said it. From the evidence, she's probably going to be in a privileged position, a position which many of her friends would have loved to be in, for so instance. It could so be, we should be very it careful. Could also be it, that, yes. it could also be that maybe from her parents' side, it's seen as an honor and a privilege also because of what they might benefit. Oh, yes. As a family. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, but yes. are these considerations not selfish in nature? <laughs> um, in the sense that, no, I'm asking, you know, yeah. are they not selfish in nature um, considering that maybe for the child herself, it's not in the child's best interest, but it is in the family's interest. Well, unfortunately, we haven't we haven't heard from the child. Again, probably, again, we are still and guessing agency, and all and of that. Yes, you know, yes, as we unfortunately, we haven't so. heard from the girl, mm. and we may never he hear yeah. from her. Yeah. But under the children's act, sometimes when it comes to custody issues, mm. right, mm. the law allows for the children to come to the court, for yeah. instance, to say or say things what where they, they want feel. to be, yeah. where they want to be, and mm. things like that. Mm. You know. So <laughs> these are all these 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 issues are actually there. You may say it's it's selfish, but selfish, yes. Aren't we all selfish in a lot of things that we do generally? Kweku, people always gravitate towards their self-interest. It is human nature. Yes. You understand me? So if the parents were being selfish because they wanted the best for yeah. their child yeah. in the circumstances, yeah. why do you criticize and blame them? You shouldn't do that. Okay, yeah. interesting. So, so I think we really need to probe the extent of the engagement yes. as our because it's yes. if, if it's sexual, then that's a problem. If it's sexual, then it's it's it infringes mm. the law mm. on defilement. Yeah. 
and that's grief. Yes. Because we can't do anything about that. Yes. If they if they can tell us that it will not be sexual, then 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 we can be quite assured because it may not have broken any law. Mm. So the extent of the engagement yeah, really will be key. But the question is how will we know that? <laughs> Before we go for a break, let me just ask, is there any point in time where we know the hierarchy of laws? Right, but is there any point in time where you find that a law in the custom or traditional sense can supersede, um, you know, what you call positive law? Well, there, there, there are. It's possible that they are not not when they, they are inconsistent with the constitution. Okay. That will never happen. Okay. happen. Okay. But there are times when the, the courts would uphold a certain you know position yes. of of law. Okay. Although society may disagree. Okay. And have very, um, you know, be emotional about those mm. those laws. Okay, mm. Mm. but the courts can uphold a position, okay. not because you know, but it's, if if it conflicts with the constitution, yeah. definitely that will not happen. Okay, fantastic. It shouldn't it shouldn't happen that way. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we're back, the docket is up next. All right. Well, the docket is up next, and. Um, this one says here, hello, a question of law. I find myself in a difficult situation and seek your guidance. I was in a relationship with a lady who, at the time we met, had dropped out of senior high school, that's SHS. As a, SHS. I supported her financially to pursue a university education with the intention of getting married once she completed her studies. However, months after graduation, she began distancing herself from me and last week she expressed that she no longer loves me and wishes to end the relationship this has left me devastated i want to explore the possibility of taking legal action to protect my investments and prevent being taken advantage of can you advise me whether i can sue her and claim back the investments i made in the relationship how can the law help me well, I'm going to Albert with this one. Uh, this this scenario reminds me of Kwame Eugene's song, Broken Heart, No Go, something like that. You ever <laughs> heard that song? <laughs> I think the guy is, 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 has a broken heart. Um, but... No, by the pain. Oh, yeah. You and then that's it, why that's why you have you to know, be emotions. cautious when you invest in such relationships which have not even... Um, ended up you are, when it's not in a marriage context mm. okay mm. Uh, but legally um you know people people go into all kinds of contracts right some contracts are illegal and contracts generally must be what legal mm. and so the the fact we have um, does not tell us for instance that the two of them had some form of agreement from the start that look invest in me mm. and when i graduate from the university i will i'll marry you mm. i mean even if that agreement agreement was there i do not know how uh, legal that would be or how effective that agreement will be because at the end of the day assuming it is even a contract yeah. and there is a breach do the courts have a remedy to give you mm. marriage is a contract but it's a special form of contract there are some remedies you can get in the usual contract, like specific performance. Okay. So for instance, Kweku, you are supposed to deliver uh, a certain product to me after I've paid you. Yeah. I've paid you, but you haven't delivered. Yeah. The court can order specific performance, mm. meaning that perform your side of the obligation yeah. because I have performed my, my side, side of the obligation. Yeah. Okay. I mean, marriage is one of those situations where you cannot grant specific performance because you cannot compel someone to marry someone he doesn't want to marry. Yeah, but then uh -huh. where where yes. comes in the whole concept of promise to marry? Oh, there is a, there's a promise to there's the promise to marry is yeah. there, but the promise to marry is not as simple as people see it. You see, from when when you you know people do engagements or yes. customary marriage, yes. Yes. although it's a marriage in the typical African sense, yes. it is a precursor for the ordinance marriage. Okay, so when somebody has, for instance, done customary marriage, mm. the expectation is that. It would. Uh, there's, there's a term which is used. It will be. It will transform into ordinance marriage. So mm. there's that legitimate expectation that mm. it will end up in the ordinance. If it doesn't end, 
I think it's a clear case to talk about breach of promise to marry, mm. for instance, in which the court can award damages generally, but not another specific performance. Go and marry because you can okay. force somebody to, to, to marry. Okay, and so and so those those kinds of situations are there, but in this case, I did not even see that they have an agreement. Mm. The the gentleman is saying that he started investing with the intention. Mm. Maybe he was he was thinking he he, he had so, no you, so he was thinking by himself. He didn't even really discuss it with he her. He didn't even discuss with the girl it's or possible. the lady. Yeah, you get it. Maybe if he had, the situation would have been different, right? So I I think that at this point. But in yeah. defense of the gentleman, yes. The lady came to him, yes, and said that she no longer loves him and wishes to end the relationship. Okay. Look, which what, suggests okay. Yeah, what, what's clear is that there was a relationship. Yes. yes. Nobody's denying the fact that there was yes. a relationship. Yes. You know, they, they, I've heard this breach of promise to marry thing said many times by people. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even grasp. You don't even understand it. They, you know, like like uh, uh, Abbe Riley said, that, yes. it, it's not as simple as it is. A lot in customary law, mm. the instances of breach of promise to marry are very slim. Mm. Like he said, there is you've done the customary marriage. You want to convert that to ordinance. Mm. If that is not happening within reasonable time, you could say there's a breach of promise to marry. Okay. We, we've had. I mean, there's 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 adequate case law on this, and a lot of the cases have said for example that where you are going to undertake customary marriage mm. and you add a ring and a bible mm. as part of the things you are taking to the marriage mm. as a man giving to the woman mm. then there is that unstated promise mm. to convert the marriage from customary to uh, ordinance mm. because ring is not known to custom uh, mm. customary marriage okay all right your customary system okay bible is not known to it okay. so the fact of you adding a bible and, and a ring, ring to the items yeah. suggests that there is that intention, intention to of that. converting the marriage from okay. customary to ordinance, ordinance yeah. and and it must happen within reasonable time mm. and, and 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 circumstances being reasonable if it doesn't happen that way then you could come up with an issue of uh, uh, breach of promise to marry, etc., you know, so these promises usually will, will amount to shallow statements, as, as Professor Alote and Co. Will say, mm -hmm. they are shallow statements. So if you are going out with somebody, yeah, it's a mutual relationship. You are getting to know yourselves, yeah, with perhaps the ultimate aim of of settling, settling and, yeah. and and things yeah. happen. The lady gives you things; you also give the person things. Yeah, perhaps because you have the greater financial muscle. You, you happen to do a lot more of that. Mm. The person too might have done a few things. The person maybe washed for you, mm. cooked for you, did a few things for you that ordinarily the if, person should not be doing. If it, but again... If it is a sexual if it, relationship alone... Yes. Uh, assuming that everything was fine. as There are defenses. And you are given. Yes. There are defenses. Yeah. Yeah. There's okay. fraud. Okay. There could be bad character. Okay. There could be a lot of things. The fact that I promised to marry you yeah. is it's not... Uh, it, it's it's it, how do I say it? It is not it's not a blank check okay. that you can decide to do whatever you want mm, to do, mm. including being promiscuous, cheating, and doing all of all of the things we don't want. Yeah, and you still expect that because that promise I, exists. I should keep it. As, no, it can't happen. Yeah. So there are things you have to meet. Mm. Vitiating factors. There are vitiating factors. That's fraud. So. I mean, there, there's there's bad character. Mm. There, there are mental issues there are a lot problem. of things mm. so it is, it is yes. incompatibility exactly a lot of those things will come you know, so 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 it's it's not as it is you know if it were so the courts would be flooded with a lot of these cases mm. but it, it it doesn't it, i'm not even sure there could be a course of action I i'm see. not sure that it, it could ground enough course of a action course of to yeah. see this through yeah, so, you know. so what I'm saying, so, so I mean, just the point I was making. So I think that this is a very difficult case. In life, sometimes things happen to you. And, and I, I, I like to say that it's not everything that you suffer that the courts have a remedy for. Mm. It's not every every, every mm. situation. Mm. And so maybe this may just be one of those. Should you contact a lawyer anyway? Well, he can contact the lawyer who I believe might just tell him the same things that we have have mm. actually been saying over mm. here mm. i think his course of action is not very clear and it's difficult to ground one at this level mm. maybe further probing mm. can bring out some other things that we didn't know mm. before mm. okay which are not mm. part of the facts but otherwise at this level i think that uh, he's just invested in somebody who has become a graduate who is going to contribute to the whole, whole bit of society i think we should look <laughs> and, at him and, and move on. <laughs> but, but <laughs> assuming everything was set was proper yeah there are there are remedies yeah. the remedy 
as I said, cannot be specific mm. performance. You yes. cannot force me to marry somebody. Yes. It could be damages. damages. They, okay. could, they could have some compensation, compensation here and there. Yes. That is if everything was fine. Okay. But yeah. from what we have read so far and what is being said to us, that we have it, it doesn't appear like strong yes. enough. Emotionally, yes. And it could do well in the court of public opinion. But not in the court of law. Because there must be a course of action. And if you don't have one and you go to court, another lawyer may bring an application yeah. for your case to be dismissed because it does not disclose any reasonable course of action. action. Wow. So, really, so this is wow. a course of action. So, 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 so invest wisely. <laughs> invest wisely. Invest wisely. No, but you see. But make sure while you're investing, and you're also getting back. Yeah. I and mean, while the, the relationship yeah. still, you know, yeah. still subsists. But otherwise. No, I, I, yeah. I no, this is fascinating to me because I've heard it so many times oh, yeah. that it appears yeah. that within our culture, there seems to be quite a lot of this, where the person is going to school, I'm, I'm investing in hair and grooming hair for my life later I on. Be through tough. You know. <laughs> yeah. The person who goes to a university, see things differently, yeah, meet yeah. other people no, and the, all that. The lights of the city are always confusing. I'm me. telling you. Yeah. So what would you want? The person marries you and divorces you later? Well, what do you want? What do you want? Okay. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Once you must agree. It doesn't make sense. You can't force the person. Once the person has seen, quote unquote, the light. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you can't you can't yeah. so you can't rein the person in um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a big loss the person Ooh. may marry you because Give there's an agreement or a contract you know. but there's no contract that you don't divorce me you can't <laughs> wow. you can't divorce it's a sacrifice and all that really unfortunate well you heard it me yeah, i wanted to fight for you but the way it is oh, the guy. it doesn't look like it's going to happen. <laughs> it's wrong investment i mean <laughs> investment <laughs> is a risk you know, <laughs> risk investments are risky all and right kinds of things always go wrong generally mm. few situations people are able to come together and live but yeah it's it's, it's rare That's and even the the, the 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 balance of power yeah it, it's it becomes because it's like you've taken care of me it's like a daddy mm. child daddy situation child kind of yeah and when the lady who is a child in this case grows yes wants now to act becomes age, an adult wants to be assertive yeah. wants to be part of decision making yeah the daddy feels that you have been too assertive as yeah. an affront yeah you know and so it, it doesn't often Work go well well yeah. yeah well well let's start to take a look at our legal trivia for today legal trivia did you know a person shall not intentionally distribute the intimate image or visual recording of another person without the consent of that person depicted in the intimate image. This can be found in Section 67 of Cyber Security Act 2020, Act 1038. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching. A question of law today. Let me say a big thank you to my guest, Salam Adunu. He's a private legal practitioner, as well as Albert Kweshiga, also a private legal practitioner and a law lecturer at the UPSA School of Law. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming pleasure. through again. It's a pleasure. All right, and thank you too for watching. You take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll, be, we'll see you next time on another episode of A Question of Law.